Hi, it's Erin with Grow Your Health Gardening, and guess what time it is? It's time to start our strawberries. Now, if you live in the southeast, you want to start your strawberry starts, which you can buy in this form. Um, they're usually just a, a little root and a little bit of start with a leaf. Sometimes this leaf isn't even growing yet, so don't worry if it comes and it's just um, without a leaf it will grow um, with the right conditions of course <laughs> but uh, here in the southeast you want to put them in the soil in the fall for sure because it allows it to grow roots and get established um, you'll you'll want to cover them with a row cover or something for the frost but uh, come spring, you take the row cover off when um, it's sunny out especially, and you have a nice established strawberry plant which higher, has higher production. So <clears throat> the commercial growers do it that way here in the south, and we as gardeners can do it the same way too. Now these you'll notice are a little different because I'm using rock wool. And this rock wool has been soaked in a beneficial um, mix of bacteria and good bacteria and nutrients so that um, even though the system that I'm putting into it will have um, nutrients delivering it to it at the proper pH and the proper nutrient levels, um, this just beneficial bacteria just helps the plant a little bit more ward off any bad bacteria that might be in the system, um, which we keep ours pretty clean, but just in case, you never know, <laughs> you never know. So it's always good to be preventative, and this is just one step. And I can um, post that in the, the notes if you're interested in what I use for a soak. Um, anyway, we divide these in half. So you would just, um, you know, split that in half, and then you would nestle into that um, the roots and then you would put the other side to it making kind of a sandwich if you will and that that's not dirt coming out of that that's that's the nutrient mix that I put in there um, and what you're looking for is this you rubber band it you don't want the rubber band to be so tight that you're choking the plant it wants to be firm enough to hold contact from the the root stock to the rock wool and notice how I have the head of the plant right here this this is where all your nutrients and this is it might help if I put it on the screen um, this is where all your nutrients um, growth and uh, new growth comes from all the the future leaves and the future fruit is right here and so you do not want that sitting in moisture uh, this whole level so what you're looking for if I can zoom in and show you. you want to put your rock wool right up to that point and you do not want anything from that point up to be in moisture you want that to be in the air so it can oxygen and be dry if that is moist what you're gonna get is mold fungi and you're gonna get um, bad bacteria and your plants gonna rot and die so very important that area right there has to stay out in the open and with airflow okay very important the other thing that you'll notice is how I'm holding this you want to look at where the plant is naturally dipping and I don't know if you can tell if I do this you can kind of see which way it's naturally wanting to hang and so I always look for that angle and that's the way it's going to go into my system You'll notice that there's plenty of roots hanging out the back. You can remove any dead roots. Um, they do look brown here, but they will create new growth and those new roots will be white. So don't worry about those being uh, brown. They probably came out of soil. That's probably why they are that color too. Okay, so what we wanna do here is put them into a system. And one thing I wanted to show you, I use on the tower garden, I use the microgreen extension and I space them out. I don't put them every single um, hole 
And the reason for that is, um, this one I'm gonna actually put right in between here, hold on. But see how I'm putting it so it's not in the water, it's resting, and it's going to grow down this way. So all of the, all of the angles are downwards. And if you have just a little bit of roots there, it's, it's not the end of the world. You can adjust that as necessary. But here's another one, oh, I see. But these are, um, these are gonna grow downward. And then I leave a few openings. And the reason for that, I'll plug these with um, a rubber plug that I have. And you can find that on growyourhealthgardening.com. We sell those. Um, but you wanna plug it so you don't get algae growth. But then you want to unplug it when your strawberries want to set off a runner. What you can do is take one of those runners, sandwich it between rock wool like what we just did, stick the runner into here, the open port, and get a new plant. So you can propagate right within your system as the plants are growing. And the strawberry acts as a, the mother plant acts as like an umbilical cord to that new plant. And once the roots get established, which it takes about 10 days or two weeks, uh, then you can cut the umbilical cord, if you will, <laughs> that stem or leader, as some of them, runner, they have different names that people call them. Uh, you can cut that and then um, you have a totally new independent plant. So anyway, that's how we transplant strawberry starts. They look very stringy and pathetic right now but i'm telling you in a month they'll be so pretty and then um the other thing we're doing in the fall is we're watching our nighttime temps uh right now is a good time to be thinking about that and put um a water heater and i can leave a link in the comments as well below and the water heater is good just to have so when if we do have a nightly temp that dips really low, that'll come on automatically and keep the water temp um, in a good range for the root systems. And then of course I'm watching on my weather app when the nightly temps are getting close to freezing. Um, we'll probably bring these inside before then, but that's just kind of how we, and, and the reason I put them outside, I mean, you could, you could start them inside under lights, that's not a problem then you wouldn't have to move your tower at all. But it's so easy with a roller. You can allow these to get sunshine, which is gonna be far superior to any, you know, grow light I can give them, in my opinion. I've just tested that with other plants and things just grow bigger, faster outside with the sunshine. Um, so that's why I'm putting them out here because our temps are just right. And they're gonna grow for probably another three to four weeks out here and then we're gonna wheel them inside and they can finish the season um, growing <laughs> indoors under lights and then um, come spring we're just going to continue to have production so uh, these do take time to set up you know as far as planning ahead but once they're set up it's so wonderful to have fresh strawberries right off your tower in the middle of winter too so anyway i hope that helps guide you and um, I will also note there's certain varieties that you should watch for uh, because they'll grow better in your region if you're growing outdoors if you're growing indoors it doesn't matter which variety but if you're growing outdoors you do need to kind of pay attention to which varieties have been tested by universities to work well in our area so anyway I'll put that in the notes below as well and um, if you have any questions, feel sure to be sure to comment below and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Um, and then, of course, if this is helpful, be sure to like and share with other growers you know. Thanks, y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.